Cyclone 18S still expected to rapidly intensify. Well, this storm still doesn't have a name from the Bureau of Meteorology, but it is designated 18S as it's just off the coast there of the Kimberley uh, at 13.9 degrees south at 122.6 degrees east right now. That's as of 8 p.m. local time, Australian Western um, and currently has winds of 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour, pressure of 997 millibars, moving west-southwest at 8 miles per hour or 12 kilometers per hour. Now satellite imagery not looking so hot on the storm in latest frames there with convection being pushed southwards by the looks of things and uh, questions about its structure as well but forecasts are still very confident on rapid intensification to ensue fairly soon. Uh, winds extend outwards 115 nautical miles southeastwards there, um, which is probably getting close to 160 kilometers. It is currently 288 kilometers from Ardva Loon, 397 from Derby, 456 from Broome, 834 from Port Hedland, and 980 from Carrather. A cyclone watch in effect for Broome, and the warnings that are in effect further north earlier are now gone. That's because the storm moved a little bit further away um, and is no longer a threat to the further north region. Uh, but warnings will probably resurface later on as the storm gets closer to land again. So we're now looking at damaging winds for our primary hazards. We're still expecting a powerful landfall on Thursday evening, affecting the southern Kimberley and Pilbara coasts. The landfall area is still not clear cut at the moment. It's trended westward slightly, uh, but winds of over 200 km per hour are expected wherever the storm makes landfall, accompanied by a potentially severe storm surge, especially when you consider the land area and the geography uh, that bend inwards. So this is the forecast at Windfield and track of the storm over the next few days. You can see there it gets quite symmetrical. Uh, by the time we get into Thursday there, <coughs> landfall just east of Port Hedland, moving inland and then speeding off towards the southeast, still having tropical storm force winds possibly when it enters southern Australia there, southeastern part of the country, by the time we get towards the end of the week. So this storm is likely to travel quite far there. So here's the estimate winds, uh, Bureau of Meteorology down to 40 miles per hour, they were at 45 yesterday, ADT still right up there, I think they've still not got a proper handle on it, but 50 miles per hour I would say is a fair reflection on this storm right now, as you can see that bomb chart on the left hand side, they're still expecting a category 4 on the Australian scale, and that's not the whole forecast as you can see, I don't know if they forecast a stronger landfall than that. And this is the JTWC cone, they're projecting a 150 mile per hour landfall to the east of Port Hedland. Uh, that would be 240 kilometers per hour sustained winds, which would be catastrophic. But thankfully, uh, this area around 80 mile beach, if it still makes landfall there, is very sparse. But we are concerned about possible westward deviations towards Port Hedland. Now this is the GFS forecast and you can see there it really ramps up and becomes a category 4. Its latest forecast looks like it's calling for a landfall a little bit further west as well um, and then sweeping across Australia there towards the southeast. Uh, a more easterly curve than what we saw on yesterday's forecast it has to be said as well. Um, I think there's a ridge that might push it even further east across Australia there and down towards New South Wales in the end. Interesting to see that. Here's simulated radar and you can see this screwed projection uh, showing that the storm really tightens up and by the time we get to the 12th it has a proper decent eye and eye wall surrounding it. Uh, so I guess that's the real line to see whether this storm really will ramp up in the next 36 hours that would be the GFS expects rapid strengthening to the point where it's it's going to be going it's going to be completely ramping up there with a complete eye wall and there it is making landfall once again extremely high rain rates for that short period that the storms over the area but there's going to be no stalling at least so that's uh, not too much of a worry compared to the winds 
but still looking at the rainfall estimates this is what we're looking at now uh, for the coastal regions of Kimberley of course a lot of rain has fallen already but we're expecting further amounts of about 100 millimeters in some areas the Dampier Peninsula particularly um, and one or two spots further towards the north and east as well uh, could get some high rainfall but near the landfall zone we're expecting probably 10 inches 250 millimeters so certainly we've seen higher from storms uh, but still that could cause flash flooding it's not always the amount of rain but it's the rain rate when it actually strikes uh, but I think that would be the least of concerns if you are in that area for the landfall because you will be hit with 240 km per hour winds potentially sea surface temperatures looking decent there is a cool pool actually a little bit underneath the storm probably caused by it uh, but ahead of the storm the temperatures are still very good over 30 degrees celsius these temperatures are probably a bit conservative so probably pushing close to 32 near the landfall zone um, and that is closing in now so the storm will take full advantage of those conditions we expect in the next two to three days it is a short window before landfall already um, and it is a concern that uh, it's still quite weak and people may not be fully aware of what it might do next here is the satellite imagery and you can see it, it, it a large scale it looks decent uh, but looking on the right hand side of it there it does look like there's uh, certainly a weakness and perhaps dry air intrusion uh, wind shear might still have a little hold on it but probably not much at this point point. and you can check out these latest floaters on the force 13 website and that shows all kinds of different projections we only show four of them on here but it'll at least double that and you can see the infrared view there convection being pushed southwards there's still quite a few areas of strong convection but not that many really um, so the prognosis really is that it's probably not stacked properly and I expect that we will see that uh, resolve itself well it needs to resolve itself in the next 24 hours if we're going to see that kind of intensification that we're looking at on the models. It is likely to get its name soon and I would watch out very closely for further updates.